We are a Kol Haruach Messianic Fellowship, a fellowship of Jews and non-Jews joined together as one new man through Yeshua the Messiah. We reside in El Paso, Texas and meet in our home for, for the Sabbath. The subject of this video is a scripture that might be one of the most misquoted scriptures in the world, if not the most misquoted. Um, we can't, you know, I hear almost every day at least two or three times when I listen to some of the people out there on the YouTube saying, we can't know when he returns, when, when the Messiah returns, because no man knows the day or hour of his return. And they're, all, they're quoting Matthew 24, 36. Um, so the name of this teaching would be The Mystery of No Man Knows the Day or the Hour. Now, uh, Yeshua was asked in Matthew 24, 3 by his students, or his Tamidim, his disciples, quoting verse 3 of chapter 24. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? In order to really understand the words of Yeshua, it is absolute, absolutely necessary to understand prophecy from a Hebraic and historical biblical basis. The times and seasons of God, as well as the calendar of God given throughout the scriptures. There, there are not many prophetic books or videos that talk about the times and seasons, or God and His calendar. And of those that do, you might only hear some basic surface, surface things uh, that are taught primarily by Messianic Jews who believe in Yeshua, who believe in Jesus, and do the mitzvot, or the commandments of Elohim. However, I am sad to say that many Messianic Jews also follow many Christian prophetic interpretations, that are not correct because they don't study these things for themselves. Really understanding how God is talking and what He is saying. Let's start off on uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. This is what it says. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I ask you out there, I ask you out there to look at the scriptures. Take another look. Look at it in context. Let's go deeper than the surface. Be a studier of the word. Some say a Berean. I will share some scriptures in this video that hopefully will cause you to question false things you have believed. I have changed my beliefs many times because I study for myself. So let's look at some of the scriptures and define them, not as most people think or know. Let's look at Matthew 24, verses 32 to 39, quoting, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is, it is near, it is at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my Father only. But as, a day, as in the days of Noah, so also will, will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, I know you probably heard that many times, probably, you know, every day in some places. What was Yeshua talking about when he was talking about people escaping and the people staying? The answer is both. Those eating, drinking, and marrying were destroyed. Those in the ark with Noah were saved. Why did they not know the flood was coming? It was preached by Noah while he was building the ark. His actions in obedience to God spoke even more loudly than words. He was mocked and ridiculed, and people carried on like everything would always be well. 
Does that sound familiar? They carried on their normal lives. There was no repentance, only behavior that was more evil, more violent, and more dark. Yeshua said it would be the same way in the day of his return. So let's, we're going to go into a little more detail as to what's going on here. Because this is telling us a lot. It is also telling us there will be physical things present that will convince all that destruction is approaching. For only, that only those obedient to God's word will know. Because who was obedient to God's word? It was Noah. So they were the ones that knew and prepared. So how do we become like Noah? And we're going to look into that right now. First of all, we need to understand what is the day of his return. And what is the day of the Lord? It, it is not a 24-hour day. And not the 24-hour day of Messiah Yeshua's return. It is a 1,000-year day. One of the many names or titles for the day of the Lord is the day of Messiah. So let's look at a few scriptures. But before we look at those scriptures, I want you to see that. Again, I'm going to repeat myself on this. There is a 24-hour day, and that is not what it's talking about here. And then there is a 1,000-year day. That is what we're going to be talking about. Because that is what the scripture is talking about. Looking at Psalms, Psalm 90 verse 4. This is written by Moses. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. And like a watch in the night. Now we're going to go over to 2 Peter 3, 8 to 12. But beloved, do not forget this one thing. That with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct or in godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. <clears throat> so, after we quoted Moses, and then we, we I shared with you in Peter, in, first, in 2 Peter 3, uh, who was quoting Moses. He was quoting the same psalm that I started with. That a day is as a thousand years to the Lord. And how, and how this day, this 1,000 year day, comes as a thief in the night. We're going to, now I want to go over with you 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 11. There's a reason I'm going over the, these passages with you because there's going to be, I'm going to show you a difference between those who say that no man knows the day or the hour and those who, who actually say in the scriptures that actually we're supposed to know. Is there a conflict there? You're going to find out there isn't. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 11. But concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. That doesn't sound too good, does it? But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Oh my goodness. So he's not coming as a thief to these brothers. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Yeshua, Jesus, 
the Messiah, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. It seems like there's some kind of conflict here. Because one says he's coming as a thief in the night. And the other one is saying, you, you know very well that you know the times and, and seasons so that, that, that they will not come to you as a thief in the night. So let's, let's find out what's going on here. There is no conflict. The question that you ought to ask, that every person ought to ask, is in what manner is the day of the Lord coming to you? In what manner is the day of the Lord coming to you? Coming to me? What is your condition? What is our condition? I look inward to my own heart about this every day. Every day I'm looking inward. Sometimes I don't even feel like I don't even feel like he should take me if he were to come. But I also know that his mercy is grace. Is, but I also know his mercy is great. And every morning his mercies are new every morning. I strive to live among those. I strive to live among those who know the times and seasons. So the day of the Lord will not come to me as a thief in the night. It is not Messiah who comes as a thief. It is the day of the Lord's wrath. This belief that we will not know the day or hour of his return has come out of this lack of an understanding of the day of the Lord. Many people covering every denomination of Christianity say that we will not know when he is coming. They say we will not know the day or hour of his return. They say he is coming like a thief to everyone. But first, 1 Thessalonians 5 says the opposite, and also how we will know the day or hour. Yeshua did not say that, neither did any writer of any of the scriptures of the Bible say that. This is why I was led to do this video. It is to clearly show how there is no such thing as no man knows the day or the hour. In the next video, We'll continue this subject matter, continue this, this line of thinking, this way of looking at the word.